it's been a while since my last YouTube video. Lots of life has been happening since then, but it's all good stuff. And if you've ever watched any of my videos or courses before, you'll probably first notice that my backdrop has changed. We moved houses last year. We didn't go far, just to a newer place in Ashland, a mile or so from the old place. It's been a great move, but my office is smaller and I'm still getting it set up, but it's getting close. Maybe I'll do an office tour video at some point. Now, according to my channel, the last photography related video I posted was on Photoshop Actions and the TK8 My Actions module, and that was eight months ago. So I figured I might as well pick up where I left off. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I make some really simple actions that I use to streamline my workflow in Photoshop. They're really helpful. So let's check it out. I used to record fairly elaborate actions, but most of those and quite a few more have now been built right into the TK plugin. So it's easiest for me to just run them from there. These days, the actions I make are often for simple Photoshop or keyboard functions that I use all the time, but I wish were more efficient. I add these simple actions to the TK My Actions module where I can easily run them with a single click. If you don't use the TK plugin, even having these actions in your Photoshop Actions panel could still streamline your workflow quite a bit, especially if you use it in button mode. The TK My Actions module is kind of like button mode. You just have more control over what it contains and how it's organized. And to record actions in Photoshop, you need to be out of button mode. Let's start by building a very simple action. Snap enables tools like the Move tool or the Crop tool to lock on to the edge of the image canvas. This can be really useful, but sometimes it's a pain. For example, with things like the crop tool or free transform, when snap is on and you want to cut just a few pixels off the edge, for example, like this little stick that's on the edge here, if I want to crop that out, it's difficult because every time I get close to the edge, it snaps to it. And so I either have to go way inside the edge, I can't get right where I want to be next to the edge. So let's record an action that provides a quick way to turn snap on and off. So I'll get out of the crop tool here. And in the actions panel, we're gonna come down and click the new action button right there. And we're gonna call this action snap. And I'm gonna put it in an action set called examples that I made just for this video, but you can put it in whatever action set you have that you want it to be in. And now we'll click record. Everything I do from here out will be recorded into this action. Next, I'm gonna come up to the action panel menu right here, and I'm gonna select insert menu item and it asks me to insert the menu item that I want to go here. So the menu item that I want is in the view menu. So I'll open that and it's right here, it's called snap. So I'll click on that. And when I click okay, it'll add that menu item into my action. So click okay. And now that's it. I click stop to stop recording the action. If we take a look, Snap is currently on. So let's go back to the crop tool and I'm gonna zoom in back over to that little stick that's over here. And we can see that it is snapping right to the edge. So anytime I get close, it just jumps over there. But now if I run the snap action, which I've actually added here in TK My Actions, or you can run it from your actions panel. So I need to get out of the crop tool and then I can just click snap to run that action. And so now snap has been turned off. Let's take a look, view, snap is off. So I can now crop as close to the edge as I want and it won't snap to the edge. So sometimes having snap off is, is a good thing. So if I click the check mark, I can commit to that crop, but now if I want snap to come back on, I can just click snap again and now we'll see that snap is back on. Now on to the second action. For certain things I do in Photoshop, I like to have the ruler showing. 
but they also take up space and often aren't necessary. This action makes it really easy to turn them on and off. So in the Photoshop Actions panel, I'm gonna make a new action. This one is called Rulers. I'm gonna put it in that same examples folder and click record. And now I'm recording. So all I need to do is come up to the actions panel menu, select insert menu item, come up to view rulers, click OK and stop recording. And now I've created my rulers action. And I've added that rulers action to the TK My Actions module. So now when I click on that, I can turn my rulers off or turn them on just with a single click. One of the things that I open the rulers for is to make guides. Guides have many uses, but I often use them to help me get accurate horizontal and vertical lines when I'm transforming or warping an image. For example, I can see that with my wide angle lens, the lighthouse here is kind of leaning out and warped out to the side. So I wanna transform it, but I also wanna keep everything looking vertical and horizontal. So I can pull down a guide from the top ruler and that's gonna be what I use to make sure that my horizon stays level. And then I can pull out a couple of guides from the side ruler and these guides are gonna help me get the lighthouse arranged or transformed so it is vertical. So once I've done that, I can now go to edit, transform, warp. And now I can warp my image so that my lighthouse is straight up and down. Something like that. And I can also make sure that my horizon is still straight. And so now that looks much more accurate. Now I can click this button to get out of warp mode and just be in regular free transform mode. And I can use that to drag over the image to fill in the empty canvas. And when I click the check mark, I've now committed to that warp. But my guides are still out there. So for this action, we're gonna create a new action called Clear Guides. And again, I'll put it in my examples collection, click record, and just like before, I'm gonna come up to the actions menu, select insert menu item, come up to view menu, come down to guides and clear guides and select that and click OK, and then stop recording. So now I've got that clear guides action recorded, and here it is in the TK My Actions menu. Again, I can run it from the actions uh, panel itself, or for me, I just always have this open. So if I wanna clear guides, I can now just click that action and the guides are cleared for me. So these two actions in combination are really useful. For example, if my rulers are off and I need some guides, I can click this one to show the rulers. I can drag out the guides that I need for whatever it is that I need to use them for. I can do that. And when I'm done, I can just click clear guides and then I can click rulers again to hide the rulers. Once I've worked on an image in Photoshop, I often have a whole bunch of layers. Sometimes I'd like to be able to mask or adjust all of those layers at the same time in order to fine tune the adjustments I made as a single group. So for this, I make an action that puts all the layers except the background layer into a single group. This action is a little more complex than the other ones, but here's how we would do it. First of all, in an image that has multiple layers, I wanna to go to the bottom layer. And if that is a background, a locked background layer, the first thing I need to do is click the lock to unlock it. This will enable the action to work whether that bottom layer is set as a background layer or not. And next, click on a layer that isn't that bottom layer. It can be any one. I'm just gonna click on that one. Now I'm gonna record a new action. This one's gonna be called group all. 
Again, I'll put it in my examples folder and click record. The first step in the action is to go to the bottom layer. The keyboard shortcut for that on a PC is three keys, the Alt key, the plus key, and the comma key. On a Mac, it would be the Option key, the plus key, and the comma key. So on my PC, Alt plus comma. So that moves me down to the bottom layer. Next, we need to come up to the layer menu, come down to new, and then select background from layer. So if the bottom layer is not already a background layer, this will make it a background layer. Next, type Control Alt A or Command Option A on a Mac, and this will select all the layers except for the back layer. And then finally, type Control G or Command G on a Mac, and that will put all of those layers into a group. I also usually at this point add a mask to the group because oftentimes I want to do some masking on the entire group. And I also name the group adjustments because all my adjustments are in that single group. And at this point, I will stop recording the action. Now, if I go back in the history to when the image was first opened, you can see here it is. And now, when I run that group all action, this time I'm just gonna go ahead and run it right here from the actions panel. So when I run that action, it goes ahead and does everything I just asked it to do. And if it had already been a background layer, there would be a little pop-up that would say, it doesn't need to make it a background layer. You would just click continue and the action would continue running. And now I've got all of my adjustments inside that group. And this enables me to then dial down all of those adjustments together using the opacity slider. So I can dial in just the amount of those adjustments that I want, or I could mask around that mask if I wanted to take out the entire group of adjustments in just certain areas of the image. And finally, for the last action, I often have multiple images open in tabs for various reasons. And when I'm done with all those images, instead of closing each one individually, it saves time to just do a close all. And it saves even more time if I have an action to close all. This is another really simple action. So I'll just come to the actions panel and we'll call this action close all, put it in my examples set, click record. And now I come up to the actions panel menu and select insert menu item come over to the file menu and select close all click OK and stop recording and now when I run the close all action whether I run it from the my actions module or from right here in the actions panel if I haven't previously saved these images it'll ask me if I want to save them and I can select yes or no. And if I have already saved them, it'll just automatically close them. In this case, these are just examples, so I actually don't wanna save them. So I'm just gonna click apply to all, and then say, no, I don't need to save. And it closes all of the images that I had open. That's enough for this video, but you probably already see other simple Photoshop functions you do all the time that would be great recorded as simple actions. And if you have the TK8 plugin and want to make use of the My Actions module, remember to check the links down in the description to watch my video and Tony Kuiper's video on how to get it all set up. So that's all for now. As always, thanks for tuning in. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you again soon, sooner than eight months this time, I promise.